Principal, and I'm really delighted to open this meeting. Uh, I expect people will be wandering in through the course of the morning. I told Wolfgang, I think he threw too good a party last night. And uh, some people were up late, which is, which is fine. We are here to do something that I think is really special, which is to celebrate the accomplishments of the Liechtenstein Institute for Self-Determination over its first 10-year history and even into the period, sort of a startup period, five or seven years before um, the, the institute was formally um, uh, founded. So I, I, I really want to start by congratulating Wolfgang and all of the people he's worked with for putting together a really fascinating agenda and the fact that you know, so many of his former students and colleagues have, um, uh, collaborators have come uh, and will be participating over the next uh, two days is really a great testament to what the Institute has accomplished, both in terms of education, scholarship, and also the practice of diplomacy. So there's a lot of congratulating to do. We are especially honored uh, by the presence of His Serene Highness Prince Hans Adam II of Liechtenstein, whose generosity founded the Institute. And for those of you who uh, went to his talk yesterday, um, you would know that he recently published a book called The State of the Third Millennium, in which he presents a very thoughtful and compelling case for how states might better serve their constituents in the future. Uh, I, I, I think the first chapter of the book, which he may not have talked about in his address, uh, is very nice because in it he provides this very personal account of why he became I interested in the issue of self-determination um, starting from a very young age. And he talks about his family background, um, the history of his family, um, his early interest in the war in Algeria and vast separatism, and other issues that really led him to question why some ethnic groups have been able to exercise the right to self-determination, whereas others have not. Uh, I was also particularly pleased because I'm an economist and he really stressed how his training as an economist really shaped his thinking about the role of states in supporting economic growth and prosperity for their citizens. And, and so uh, for those of you who haven't looked at the book, I would, I would um, urge you to look at that. The other thing that's in this chapter is his reasoning for establishing the Liechtenstein Institute at Princeton. Um, and Apparently, he gave an address here in the early 1990s, um, came to know something about the university and the Woodrow Wilson School, and he talks in the book about a number of factors that really make this a great place for an institute like LISD. Its proximity to New York City and the United Nations, um, the legacy of Woodrow Wilson, who uh, was um, president of the university before becoming president of the United States, and Wilson's role as an advocate for the right to self-determination. And he also talks about the presence of Wolfgang Donsbach Gruber, who was already at Princeton and shared his interests in self-determination. So I have to say a little bit about Wolfgang, right? And because I think Lizzie's accomplishments have been really remarkable in large part due to his dedication and um, uh, zest for running this institute. His style as director is um, uh, very engaged, I would say. He's the opposite of a disengaged <laughs> director. Yeah. He thrives on really being at the center of the issues that LISD uh, deals with. And I have to say that I, I've only been dean for a year and a half, and over the previous eight and a half years, most of what I learned about LISD, because I'm not, I'm not in this field, I do health economics, um, most of what I learned about the institute I learned in a parking lot. <laughs> and let me describe why. I usually come into work around 8 a.m. And at the time, I was parking over in Lot 10. Those of you who know the university know where Lot 10 is. And on many, many days, as I would be coming in, Wolfgang would be leaving at 8 in the morning. And I realized why. One is because of the time zones in which his, the business that he was d dealing with were, were, you know, Bosnia's eight hours, six hours behind. Uh, he was working from about 2 in the morning to about 8 in the morning um, on the phone. I assume. Uh, and <laughs> now often, and I, I don't know whether he'd spent the whole night there or part of the night there, but you know, and, and often he would come out of the building and he would be lugging a suitcase. And it was either because he'd come back from somewhere the day before or he was going off somewhere that day, or sometimes both. You know, he'd sort of come back for an evening of phone calls and was heading out of town. 
Um, but, but joking aside, I think, you know, it was interesting to hear about the evolution of the Institute's work. And, you know, very early on, the focus was on Bosnia. Um, after 9-11, the focus really shifted and uh, it, to Afghanistan. But I think th there are also a number of other areas. Um, Kosovo, um, they've done work on democratization and decentralization in India. They've done work on the future of the Russian state, um, work on Iran, uh, lots of other issues. And, and just looking at the website and looking at the projects that have been run is really impressive. For former students in the audience, and they may be the ones who were up drinking late last night and coming in later, I don't know. But it, it's really impossible to talk to Wolfgang about Lucy without hearing about what Wolfgang always refers to as his kids. And I know not, many of them are you know, graduated and have gone on and are doing really impressive things in their careers, but his dedication to um, getting students engaged in the issues of the Institute, um, getting them involved in work has been just very impressive. And his dedication to his visitors who have come in from all over the world and really play a vital role in the Institute uh, is also something that's very um, featured very prominently in the Institute. I think the other important feature of LISD is its ability to engage people who come from a really wide variety of backgrounds. So, you know, there are practitioners, there are academics, but I think even more importantly, the people who are involved in, in LISD really look at the issue of self-determination from a wide variety of backgrounds. Uh, there are people in politics, there are economists, um, there are people who deal with law, religion, gender, and this is something that I think at Princeton we really prize, at the Woodrow Wilson School we really prize, which is um, t taking um, really important issues in policy and bringing lots of different, looking at that, those issues through many different lenses. And uh, the work that Lizzie's done has really epitomized that. So let me wrap up. Uh, I would like to congratulate Wolfgang and everybody else who has been involved with Lizzie over the last 10 years. I'm looking forward to seeing how the next decade develops. And I'm sure that the panel and the other panels over the next few days will be wonderful. So thanks for coming.